Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to never miss a video and support independent documentary films. Is it possible to only bring in products in our lives that did not come from sweatshops, did not pollute soils and water table, did not poison workers and wildlife when they were produced? Products that did not get wrapped up in non-recyclable petroleum-based plastic that forever increase our dependency on fossil fuels, thereby increasing the number of conflicts around the world? Is it possible, at our level, to make the world fairer, more ethical and live by a zero-suffering guideline? I'm Robin, Robin Webb. Um, I run Vegetarian Shoes in Brighton. And how long ago did you start? Well, we started uh, 20, almost 28 years ago now. Um, originally I made shoes by hand for the first few years. Um, but as the business grew, we, we started getting factories to make shoes. So for the last, whatever, 25, 26 years. Well, originally I just made some shoes for myself, not as a business. Um, I had just left art college and uh, I, I love making things. I, I still do love making things, not just shoes. And I made some shoes for myself. I made some shoes with, with. My dad told me that you could get shoes with car tire soles. And I hadn't seen any pictures at that point. And, and there was, this was ages ago, so there's no internet. Kind of fortunately, in a way, because I, I couldn't picture what they looked like. So I made up my own car tire sole shoes. I went to the local Quick Fit and rolled home some tires, cut out some sole shapes. And, and kind of made these shoes up as I went along. And I made them for me, you know, I was working in a factory at the time and I got a lot of, a lot of guys took to the mickey out of me because they looked a bit funny. And then I made some for some friends and I made some more and, it, and then started turning anything, everything I found into a pair of shoes. So I'd go to jumble sales and get old leather, so being vegetarian. Originally it wasn't vegetarian shoes, it was just shoes. But I was vegetarian and I didn't like using leather so I'd get old leather or second hand leather. But anything from old satchels to coats to rubber matting from cars, cork, bathroom tiles, whatever I would experiment with and turn into shoes. Um, for the fun of it really. And then a few years later than that a friend opened a shop and I put some of these in the window with a sign saying I'll make shoes to order. I'm not quite sure, you know, how it, how it would go, but um, I took a few orders and I sort of made, each pair was different, I, I would draw around people's feet, make them to order, make them to measure, um, and it kind of grew from there. After a couple of years uh, of making shoes by hand, I started vegetarian shoes and did that for a year or two, and at that point there was kind of a momentum, and I couldn't make, I could make about six pairs a week, and I'd make them in batches of six or ten or twelve so every couple of weeks probably I'd have a batch finished but without working seven days a week you know there, there's, there's I was realizing there was a product here that um, I couldn't supply fast enough and that was when was that that was early 90s and I approached the Dr. Martin's factory and got them to make some shoes for me with our material but with our label and where was it based? That was in Northampton. We used factories in the UK, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Poland. We, we did have the choice to have some things made overseas, further afield than Europe, and, and I resisted it actually. There was, I, it's an unknown. Yes, you can check, but you, you hear stories of people being shown what um, the factory owners want to show them. So I'd just rather not get involved with that and, and keep our stuff made in Europe. And I think our customers appreciate that as well. It could well be that some other bigger, more corporate brands will bring out their version of non-leather shoes. But I suspect until veganism becomes really mainstream, which I know it is becoming, um, that the customers will appreciate a small business like us sourcing what we call ethically or responsibly. It's not just about the product. It, it, there's a lot of boxes to tick, but um, it's how the, the workers are treated, that kind of thing as well. S synthetics are getting better and better, and now there are plant-based shoes and products, or I don't miss using leather. Um, it's a brilliant material to work with. Actually, when we first started, 
to, to, uh, convincing factories to use our synthetics was, was quite a difficult job. A lot, of them were, were, a lot of them were quite traditional. Often I heard, no, we only use leather. And then when we'd, we'd go to the factories, plus I was quite young, didn't quite know what I was doing. So as a, whatever, 23 year old, fresh out of art college, you know, you, the factories don't take you so seriously. But with persistence, we got them to make samples with synthetics and actually many times uh, the factories would prefer using these materials once they'd used them for a while because of their uniform properties. You know, when you get a leather skin, you have to work around the shapes of the skin. You get weak parts, stronger parts. Animals can have scars on them, so they have to work around um, things like that. Whereas our shoes, they, they could multi-cut them. You know, when we started, um, we were starting just when like, breathable microfibers were becoming available. So it's a good time to start up to that point. Plastic shoes were pretty, cheaply made, poorly made, would crack, would make your feet sweat. But there's another step now with, with synthetics and materials that are becoming available, which is that there's more plant-based materials. So we're experimenting with um, uh, Pinatex, which is made from uh, pineapple fibers. Uh, we've been using hemp for quite some time. Some of our materials have a, a, a cotton content, so they have a high sort of biodegradability factor. Um, a lot of our materials that were once processed with uh, solvents are now water-based. And these are sort of European-made um, materials. Some of it is in its infancy. Uh, so there's, there's materials or leather made from mushrooms. Um, I was talking to some guys in Denmark the other day about apple leather. Some of these are more work better than others, but this is the next step. I still want to make the ultimate shoe. I still want to save the world, <laughs> in a small way at least. Sometimes it's about minimizing the impact on the world um, rather than doing it. Get, uh, it it's, it's hard not to, to, it's hard to live and not make an impact on the world, but if we can reduce the environmental impact, that's brilliant. So having, yeah, having factories in Europe does help minimize the sort of the environmental impact because there's, there's, there's less traveling involved, less um, air freight, you know, things can be shipped by road. To be, you know, being, things being made in the EC, EU, uh, are, come under that jurisdiction of the EU, so there's less solvents, for example, uh, allowed to be released into the atmosphere, that sort of thing. Whereas in Far East, it's unregulated, so things are made as cheaply, possibly or as fast as possible without any necessarily consideration towards necessarily workers rights or, um, or the environment. What we're trying to do is good quality shoes that are equivalent to what's out there. We don't need to reinvent, we don't need to lead the way with fashion. We do our generic versions of what is available everywhere but made in Europe with good quality materials. So we've got a, a loyal sort of customer base if you like but we're expanding all the time we I guess the way we're expanding is through wholesale we're getting our shoes into other shops around the world um, and I there's a we've got a good bunch now of wholesale customers who we didn't, it's, it's business but we're, but we're really friendly with as well um, who we've got good ongoing relationships with so our shop you know our shoes will be in say Stockholm or Berlin or New York and, and these guys are opening more shops as well, so it's not up to us to open more shoe shops. It's just to keep doing what we're doing, sort of refining what we're doing, and working, I guess, in partnership with the guys that we already are, to get our shoes out there. It takes a long time to get a business up and running and working and sort of build the infrastructure and invest in it and make all the decisions, make all the mistakes, learn from the mistakes, carry on. And that's kind of where we are now. I'm still excited by shoes. I've still got shoes in me. I've got shoes in my head that I think will be sort of future classics that I haven't got around to designing yet. I suppose there's still shoes in me that I want to do that I'm excited about. So yeah, there's a few more years in vegetarian shoes yet. You can also visit our website, fiveshotsmedia.com and check out our merchandise.